Thanks for joining us for another Spin That Shit podcast. We have a great guest with us. Justin Wells is in town. I thought it was you. <laughs> but we're also right across the street from the amazing venue, the Hi-Fi, where Howland Heights sits. The man right here. Yo, it's so nice to be here. Thank you for doing this. We are like literally in my studio and uh, like my favorite person's in town. Yeah, man. Hell yeah, baby. We might not leave your studio. This is yeah, too slick. Right? Like we I just <laughs> fly the show in from here like satellite <laughs> across the street. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we, we, no, before you go, we got to plug okay. a few things. So, yeah. so what are we making here in the studio? You got bags, you got- We have bag, leather bags, leather wallets, uh, some canvas goods. Uh, we've got a full storefront right across the street from the High Five on Virginia Avenue. We're the only gender neutral store in the state of Indiana. Oh, really? Which is super that. cool. Yeah, we don't have a men's section or a women's section. It's just a place of peace and love. It's all beauty. Yes. Just like you. It's all beauty, man. Yeah. Just like Check you. Them out. You guys got a website, I'm sure? Yep, or... howlandhigh.com. Okay. Spin well, that shit. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for interviews. <laughs> All right. Justin, you're in the Hoosier state now. I am also the only, we also have the only gender neutral sad song company. Uh, in the, <laughs> That's It's a gender neutral beard. All right. <laughs> so, been a fan for a while now. I uh, think you do great music. You wear your heart on your sleeve in some of these songs. There's some deep stuff here, and I don't think you're faking it. <laughs> uh, you know, there's some guys out there. You know, they're trying to make a living, get popular, and I don't, I don't believe them. But when I hear your voice and when you sing, I, I hear the soul. I hear it all. So I believe you. So thank you for giving us some good music for one. And uh, what, what can you tell me about like your writing pro process and doing some of these songs? Uh, you know that kind of shifts and changes i'm never somebody that is kind of constantly writing i you know i'm at, at the age of you know 39 i'm mature enough to admit that i kind of have to have a deadline for shit to get done <laughs> i talk slow i move slow i write slow um you know we're writing we're working on a new record right now uh there's no i don't want to say that there's necessarily a definable process what what happens is uh, it's time to make a record and so i've got my little note taking app and i go through there and, and you know especially when i was drinking there's some stuff in there like what the hell is this about there, he didn't even remember what are we were talking about the, what is the <laughs> what is the motive here um but it'll usually start with uh it'll usually start with me kind of singing some bullshit, singing a melody um it's a really i'm assuming with all our writers but you know the birthing process as with most, most things is kind of, you know, ugly and formative. And, uh, right. <laughs> then I flesh it out when it's, when it's kind of time. Every once in a while you have the ones that, that come down full form and those are often my favorite ones. And uh, in my opinion, some of the best ones, uh, and they just kind of, it's not a mystical thing or anything like that, but it feels like somebody else wrote it and just put it in your brain, you know? And those are my favorite ones, but yeah. uh, you know, you just kind of got to be ready for that because it comes when it comes. Right. Yeah. Is there any songs in particular that you would say that oh, really stick name. out? <laughs> uh, that came in that way. Uh, I don't think I'll name them, but um, yeah, yeah, they're out there. It didn't, it tends to be the ones people vibe with. I think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, as I sit here and just think about like even the last record and and how each of those songs came about it, it's all kind of different um and sometimes you'll you know this has happened plenty of times where you have a song that you really like that you've written that has one or two just banger lines or something uh and for whatever reason you know that song is written the way it needs to be written but you don't you're not feeling it uh something's not working and you kind of have to you have to throw it away but you know you can use parts of that Save you a couple lines. Save those lines. So sometimes some things get kind of Frankenstein in a really, um, in a really cool way. Yeah, yeah. I've always been a big fan of the writing process of how people go through all that. I should probably back up um, since it's your first time on the show. Normally, I'd like to you know take people down the road where you were from, where you're born, when did you start playing music, influences, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Dive in through that real quick. Yeah. 
Uh, born in Louisiana, moved in my um, early teens. So I have this kind of, in my mind anyway, this weird dichotomy. I mean, I'm a Kentuckian. Um, I claim Kentucky. Uh, and sometimes I mumble my words in a way that is distinctly not Kentuckian. But, uh, <laughs> and I like really spicy food. Uh, I don't know. Um, so I kind of feel like a mutt in those ways. And, and, and also, you know, started traveling, started touring pretty young. Uh, kind of hard scrabble, just, you know, we booked things ourselves and and uh, took um, a lot of the country in. So uh, I feel like I'm one of those people that, you know, if I'm here in Indianapolis for like a week, I'm going to be sounding real Indianapolis. You know what I mean? It don't take no time for, for that to happen. Uh, as far as music, I don't come from a musical family. All, you know, all my people were, um, you know, blue collar workers, um, not farmers, but mechanics and these sorts of things. And uh, uh, just listened to a lot of music. You know, dad was a classic, classic rock guy. Mom was a, you know, Motown, soul, R&B gal. I say was, they're very much alive. Um, <laughs> and they still like that music. And they still <laughs> like that music, yeah, yeah. Uh, and just sang in church, you know. Um, and then, in junior high, uh, you know, comic books weren't getting girlfriends, so started playing music, and I and I played kind of heavy music. You know, I grew up in a small town and listened to a lot of Metallica and that kind of thing. And um, but in my room in my house, you know, I write songs for th that band that were just you know as goofy as you can imagine. But uh, then you know, I started writing love songs and these kinds of things, and like. Things that definitely, you know, didn't make no sense in a heavy band and um, that kind of, that's really where this started, you know, it was definitely like hard out on a page right. kind of thing and, you know, you'll never hear those songs, I hope, but uh, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of, you know, beginnings of that. Yeah, I grew up a metalhead for sure. Yeah. And, you know, and then I somehow along the way kind of turned to bluegrass. Yeah. Which is to me just the folk version of metal. I was about to say the same blue, thing. You know, it starts speeding things up and it's all over. It's, it's just Pep Balls playing <laughs> metal on acoustic instruments. <laughs> yeah. You know, major key. So, I mean, I listen to pretty much everything, but yeah. a few things. I don't even want to go down that road. But uh, <laughs> so you're on tour currently. Cole Chaney's with you. Yeah. Cole's um, doing this one. Um, just this one? Yeah, yeah, we're kind of doing this one real quick, going home to, to tighten up some things uh, on a new record, I guess we can yeah. just say that. Well, this is a re rescheduled show, right? That's why. This is that's a rescheduled show, one. that's yeah. right, from um, you were sick. earlier this year. And uh, and then I'm going out with my pal Jason Eady, who is uh, one of the best writers in the land. And, and uh, yeah, we're, we're ready. I think that... <laughs> Things seems calm down. I think everybody's healthy. I think we can do this and do it the way we want to do it and do it right again. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Selfishly, I uh, was kind of happy when I found out the show <laughs> canceled because I was in Arkansas and I couldn't come anyway. Oh yeah. And then I saw the new date. Like, yeah, I can go. You know. It's Where were you at in Arkansas? I was uh, the Washita Mountains. I was trapping some stuff. Uh, yeah, I was trapping. Uh, there's a population there of turkeys that biologists want to keep an eye on and they have a lot of problems with predators and bobcats and yeah so we trap gray fox coyotes bobcats that sort of thing and Th this needs to be the podcast right here let's we have one start hey, this. any outdoorsy folks there's another podcast podcast called the trap house podcast and it's all um, about trapping <laughs> i don't know so, anything about it that's so yeah it's, it's interesting podcast. it's not walt disney where they show you the teeth with the jaws and, you know, there's a reason for what we do, and um, it's more of a restraining device. Everything's, yeah. you know, I don't, there's no cruelty to what people think, you know. Unless you're hungry. I mean, you can eat them if you want, yeah, but yeah. I don't recommend eating a coyote. <laughs> I tell you what, man, I would not eat a coyote. <laughs> oh, I'll probably try it. There's that show, Meat Eater, that, that guy singed, singed one, singed the hair off, but you don't want to yeah. burn hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like terrible. Yeah. He singed it that way, old school, over a fire or a flame. Yeah. And then he ate it. I do that. Nah. 
I'm not saying I would enjoy it, but I, I, would, do it. I would have to do it, it one time. That yeah. one will go viral. I'll film you, dude. Oh, yeah. That's all, that's all it takes. Okay, cool. We're done here. I, I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Speaking of outdoor stuff, uh, PETA sent me a message. Oh, no. Uh, about you and Cole. They wanted to talk to both of you. Yeah. Uh, what's the deal with, uh, in your lyrical content, with dogs being hurt? He's got <laughs> one about throwing a dog through a hole in the wall, and you're talking about... Crawling around with a crow oh, no. dog. Well, first of all, you tell Pete that I said, uh, thanks for listening to my music. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know Cole threw no dog in his song. I didn't throw no dog. I'm just talking about, uh, you know, whatever had happened to that particular <laughs> metaphorical dog. Uh, that dog's still going. So, yeah, he survived. He's you're fine. the dog. It's you're the dog. Yeah, baby. You are the dog. Yeah, no, you're gonna have this to talk. This show's the underdog. You're gonna have to talk to Cole. He just got that good looking demeanor, but there might be a darkness in him. You, then it's your <laughs> job to get that out of here. Oh, man. So, back to the music. Do you, uh, what can you tell us about this new record that's come, that you're working on and getting out there? Like, I know there's probably some things you're not allowed to say, but like. I'm probably not gonna say nothing. Ah, uh, <sighs> come on, man. Give me a okay. Tidbit. All right. Uh, here's what I think I'll say, um, of my solo records, in my mind anyway, uh, Dawn in the Distance, my first record was for me, and the United States was for kind of everybody else, and, uh, if I'm being honest, this record is for my wife, man, um, you know, the pandemic was hard on all of us. I'm not going to be redundant with that kind of stuff, but man, I was losing my mind. Well, yeah. And uh, <laughs> my woman has always got her shit together and I kind of never do. And she's just my home base, man, you know? Same here. So a lot of songs kind of spring out of that. And with any sort of like um, public facing anything, uh, musician or freaking YouTube star, whatever it is, um, you know, like I get all the glory, but she's she's doing everything. You know, nice. not even in my career, just keeping me sane and keeping me where I ought to be. So, uh, there you, I guess you heard it on spin that shit first. Hey. I wasn't gonna answer that question. Hey, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of us out there that can. Yeah. We, I mean, I'd be in the gutter without my woman. So I tell you right now. Hundred <laughs> percent. I don't know. Yeah. She gets up. But, uh, that's yeah. that's great to hear. I'd be locked up in some county, probably. <laughs> So is that, um, I mean, do we have a track number? Do we have any tracks going to be on there? Nothing like that? My, yeah. I'm, Two, okay. I got nothing for you. I, Damn yeah. it. should have paid him more money. <laughs> you ain't feeling that one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, be on the list. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Yes, for sure. Um, just got a couple more questions for you before we button this up. Ask all of them. These are all just quick. 14 and, double E. On the <laughs> What uh, is, I noticed you were at uh, Elton John the other night. Yeah. Was that pretty, I mean, legendary Dude, show? Look, man. I don't know, I probably shouldn't even brought that up been, for any No, folks, here's a it, fact. There's a time uh, in, in my water days where I definitely remember being amped up on something and like kind of ready to go to the dirt, arguing of the importance of Elton John to modern music and, uh, you know, man, there's very few artists in my mind that kind of, you know, seriously, truly transcend genre and, and kind of even cooler than that, like transcend generations, right? Um, you know, clearly the Beatles and artists like Dolly Parton, but I mean, like, dude, like, I don't know, I get almost like, I get almost like ready to throw hands if somebody says they don't like Ellen John. Not that I'm like, <laughs> not that I'm like defensive, just like, well, yeah. uh, I'm gonna need you to be more specific. You don't have to say which Elton John you don't like because this dude has done it all. You know what I mean? Like, right? You don't like the Lion King, all right? But that's on you. But you know, uh, <laughs> you don't like Saturday Night's Art right for fighting. Come on, dude. You don't. You know. Anyway, exactly. I don't, I'm not here to. I don't think I need to help Elton John sell records. I will say that that show is is as inspirational a performance as I've seen in a long time. It was a master class, and you know, I've seen him and Springsteen in the last year. And, there's just not too many artists yeah. ever that have ever done what we do better than those two. Yeah. You know, 
definitely in somebody to pull inspiration from. It's ridiculous, um, man. And there was kids there, dude, and then there was grandparents there, and everybody. Came. That's amazing. You know, it's a farewell tour. You know, I know. So. That is, yeah, some of them kids can probably relate to after watching like the newer movie that came out about it and all yeah. that. And I, unfortunately for me, I didn't get into him until probably right after high school. Sure. But, but I, I got down that road, you know. Oh, yeah. It's a long road, man. And it's all over the place. Like, if you don't like one thing, go to the next album, you know. Same with, same with a lot of artists. And, and those are kind of, to me, the, and not just musicians, uh, you know, authors, anybody. The ones that, like, um, look, man, I love ACDC as much as the next. I, that's one of the greatest <laughs> rock bands of all time. They're really good at a thing. But the artists that don't kind of try to push their own envelope, I'm not saying like a, a genre this envelope, but like themselves, you know, once they're comfortable, then they break that and try to do another thing. Uh, that's like the raddest thing to me. And, you know, Elton's one of them, you know, yeah. if, you don't, if you don't like this record, go to the next one. You know? Yeah. So, he was definitely breaking rules. In. That he'd set, you know, yeah. that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, oh, you like this thing? I'm going to burn that down and do another <laughs> thing, man. Back more in my backyard. Um, when I when I was a young guy, I first moved to Lexington trying to start a band, uh, Sunday Valley, which is Sturgill Simpson's old band. Uh, that's, a, you know, Sturgill's also a guy who, oh, you like this? I'm going to destroy this and I'm going to yes, do this. Yes, he has done that. For and, sure. It, you know, they're, they're artists like that are risking failure every time they do something. And uh, I don't know. To me, that's the most interesting thing. It's easy to find a lane that is, you know, draws people in and is profitable and just stay in that lane forever um you know cool good on you but that's kind of weak sauce too you yeah know? i was gonna say i couldn't do it personally. yeah like, yeah that's boring you gotta you gotta live your own life instead of trying to please everybody 100%, else 100 percent yeah so well like i said man i really appreciate you sitting down this so this all kind of started kind of random how you reached out to you online you, yeah. you you did the uh blue moon of kentucky cover yeah and i got the thing about covers is very difficult. I feel like for artists to pull off with, it's either good or it, it just sucks. And yours was good, and you made it your own. I'm glad to hear that. This is. Good. I didn't realize it was for a, a good cause either. Like yeah. for the tornado uh -huh. relief that was not too long ago, in December. We're, um, we're donating every dime that song makes. I, that was good to hear. And I, you uh, represent, even though being from Louisiana, you represent Kentucky well and. And I recently a, uh, told Mike from Hippies and Cowboys podcast that uh, I feel like Kentucky is up there right now as far as, well, even throughout all the years of music, they're one of the mainstays, you yeah. know, of real country music. And all the artists over time that's come out of there and guys that are out doing it right now, like yourself, and, you know, uh, I think it's the heart of it, in yeah. my opinion. It's that's just opinion. I don't want to get some... Might get some messages on that. Well, one. of course, <laughs> I, I'm proud of you know. Of course, I'm proud of it. Of course, I think that um, I like that uh, people are paying attention. I think that there's you know clearly good music everywhere. What I'm proud about uh, about Kentucky um, specifically, you know, comparing to say a state like Texas, you know, Texas has uh, has an infrastructure. You can be a Texas artist and you can thrive, man, just staying in Texas. I was going to say, you don't even so have to big. leave the state and you could run the circuit. Yeah. And they got their own great. And what they do is rad. And I hope that it kind of um, other, you know, different little pockets of genre or scenes or whatever kind of try to follow suit. But that, for the most part, hadn't existed in Kentucky. Kentucky's been uh, beautiful barns where people you know, play great bluegrass and, and that sort of thing. And what I've noticed, um, you know, having seen homies do the thing, Sturgill, Tyler, these guys, that's really making, that's shining a light on the state, which is allowing other artists uh, who have plenty to give, you know, opportunities that might not have been afforded them. That's kind of that like watershed situation that happens. Um, yeah. And meanwhile, I'm gonna stay over here on my little weird little island and do my own little <laughs> damn thing. Uh, no, it's cool, man. It's 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 good to see, and uh, yeah, of course we're we're proud of Kentucky. You know, that's rich rich musical heritage. That's Absolutely, it. yeah. We got a taste of it here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. So, brother, again, thanks thank for having you, me. man. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Christian, we're here. For... Make sure you look. Come on in one more Let time. Let's do the thing.
he's been over there. He just made he just made forty eight wallets. He did. Yeah. In, Bullshit. In I've, been, we I've been giving you Google really lies. <laughs> Yeah, check yeah. out, be sure to pay attention to Justin, what he's doing on social media, new record coming, and how and high, check out their stuff on what, online too, and uh, we'll catch you in the shit. next one. Yes. Yeah.